Here we're going to tie a stonefly nymph called the girdle bug. First thing I went ahead and did was I just wrapped some 025 or 030 lead wire onto the shank of the hook. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to wrap through this lead wire a couple times making some thread dams on each end of it. That'll keep it from sliding around. And I usually just go through it three, four times. Doesn't have to be pretty. We're going to cover all this up, anyways. Once you've got your lead wire all coated, I'm going to take our thread all the way to the, the back. Then we're going to tie in a piece of white, medium round rubber leg. We're going to tie this on one side of the hook. Then I'm going to take that same piece, trim out the front side of it, and then tie it in on the other side of the hook. I want to make sure it's right on the side. That way I'll have a bit of a split to the legs. You can see the legs are split by the hook. Then I'll trim out the butt end of that. I'm going to take my thread forward to about the little more than the halfway point. I'm going to take another piece of white rubber leg, one that's about four inches long. I'm just going to tie this in right on top of the shank of the hook with four or five nice tight wraps. And I'm going to take my thread forward just a little bit more. I'm going to take another white rubber leg. Tie that in right on top of the shank of the hook. Make sure it doesn't uh, roll from side to side too much. You want to make sure it's right on top of that hook. Then I'm going to take my thread all the way forward. I'm going to tie in what would be the antenna. I'm going to tie it in the same way that I tied in the tail. I want this piece of rubber leg to be on the side of the hook and the, the eye of the hook should actually kind of help splay it. Tie this in on each side here. I'm going to take my thread all the way back, try to dodge all these rubber legs. Now the next thing to do is take a piece of medium woolly bugger chenille, just some plain, plain Jane chenille in black. I'm just going to tie this in here right at the back. A few nice tight wraps. Once we've done that we're just going to take our thread all the way forward and just let it sit by the eye of the hook. And we're going to take that chenille and we're just going to build a body with it. Nice and smooth, nice and even. And go slow at this point. You want to make sure you don't trap any of these legs. You don't rip any of them out. So I usually just kind of take my time, work my way forward. Once I get to the first set of rubber legs, I wrap all the way up to it. Then I'm going to take a nice tight wrap right up against the rubber leg. You can see how it kind of gently forces that rubber leg to lay back. That's what I want on the girdle bug is for that rubber leg to just very slightly lay back. And I'll do the same thing on this rubber leg as well. Put a nice tight wrap up against it. And then I'm going to take one last wrap right up by the front. Then I'm very carefully going to tie it off. And 
I want to get in here as close as I can with the chenille here and my scissors and just trim the chenille out of there. And then we can whip finish. And I just whip finish like the legs aren't even there. I just keep wrapping. If they get twisted, I just simply stop and pull them out. Now we can trim the legs and the tail. I like the tail to be about half of the length of the body, maybe three quarters. You don't want to make it too short, but you also don't want it too long. So about half to three quarters the length of the body. I like the antenna to be about the same. And I like the legs on mine to be somewhat long. I like them to really wiggle and move in the current. So I'm going to trim them about the the length of the body. There we go. That's all there is to the girdle bug. Pretty easy fly to tie, not too bad. Very effective. I don't know why. That definitely does not look like a stone fly as far as those bright white legs go, but I think the fish can really find it in off color and high water and lots and lots of movement to them. You can fish this fly in the dead drift, or believe it or not, you can fish it behind a streamer and uh, strip it, and uh, very, very deadly out here on our western rivers. And you can find all the materials for this fly, along with the recipe information, at intheriffle.com.